Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Jay Wilson. I'm a content creator over at Data Crew. Today I'm doing a follow-up video on my previous video on Publish. And I wanted to include one, some visualizations that would help you kind of see what we're doing, but we're gonna build on what we discussed in the previous video by adding QA workflows into our whole sandbox solution. In addition to that, I'm also gonna talk about the differences between Publish and Sandbox and how I recommend customers use them differently. So for starters, um, in organizations that I partner with, I recommend that they split your development environment from how you distribute your content. One of the things we quickly run into is like in, um, for my end users, they might end up seeing, hey, oh, there's a V1, a V2, a V7 of this dashboard if we don't have good governance. And in if they're working with, um, you know, iterating on dash, dash, oh God, if they're iterating on data flows, they might say, oh, it's really hard to manage. Oh, I've got a V1, a V2, a V7 of this data flow. And then my customers see everything and it's a big mess. And so to solve that problem, we separate where you do development from where you distribute. And in fact, one of the things I really like about this is I can tell people, hey, in my development environment, if somebody says, hey, I just need read-only access, I say, that's okay. You actually don't need any access because you're not participating in the development process. We're gonna put you someplace else. And so we spin up different instances with different instance types for that task. All right, so, in the previous video, I walked through how to add a dev sandbox in front of your production assets. And that's really important in environments where you're doing publish. Because if you don't have separation between development work and production work, then every time I run my data flow, I'm immediately impacting my publish job, which immediately impacts the data in my distribution center where all of my customers are looking at the content. And you obviously don't want that. So sandbox is super important. Um, this process. So let's go ahead and set that up real quick. Um, here I am in the Dojo community site. Um, I have right, is this what I think it is? Okay. I have my data flow called underscore prod. It outputs a data set underscore prod and I'm already publishing in Domo Everywhere. PDX landing page prod. Okay, so I'm already publishing to my distribution center. And so again, as I iterate on my content, as I iterate on my data flow, add new functionality, add new features, I cannot afford for there to be a you know, downtime. And so I'm going to use Sandbox to create a wall between prod and dev. Let's go ahead and do that. Pushing all the wrong buttons, sorry. Okay, let me create a new repository. I went over this in the previous video. Um, we'll call this uh, landing. Or prod, or no, link. Sorry, we have to create a linked repository first. Yep, I'm going to save my repository. I am going to only promote it in the same instance. I want all of my assets to live, all of the stuff I iterate and develop on, I want that to live in the same place. I'm going to go ahead and promote. Before I can promote, I need to map my data sets. And under advanced, I'm going to add a rename rule that will replace underscore prod with underscore dev because I'm adding dev assets in front of prod. I get this right the first time. Promote and link. Let's go. Um, I need to create a new repository. Again, I'm going to call this landing page prod. In the previous video, I used dev, um, but upon further reflection and our goal of integrating QA, we'll see in a moment why this makes more sense. Okay, 
okay, promotion and linking was successful, which means I should now have my dev pipeline and my prod pipeline and a matching set of dev assets. Fantastic. So again, what this allows me to do is it allows me to come into my ETL and then I can say, um, maybe add a new column or whatever my iteration is. And maybe I'm adding functionality or a V2 release. And save and run. And what's clutch about having that sandbox in between is why are you telling me that I have a syntax error? Okay, what's clutch about having that sandbox in between dev and prod is I can spend three days or three hours or a month working on dev, but my production pipeline is still happily running, feeding the data that's going over into my distribution center. And again, all we've done is implemented that wall um, with that sandbox dev repository. Cool. What we're really here for is to understand how we can add QA. And again, I see that there's a lot more squares and stuff and it looks confusing, but it's really not. All we're doing is we're saying, hey, just like I added a linked repository, sorry, just as I added a repository for dev, which I now call prod, um, I'm going to add a repository for sandbox QA. And I'm going to create a set of QA assets. And at the end of that rainbow, I'm going to publish the assets that need to be QA'd into a QA environment. Cool. So let's do that. I'll go back into I'm going to create a new repository. And this one is going to be called page. We are going to um, close. And I'm going to use the dev landing page as a thing that I'm snapshotting. repo. I'm going to do commits in the same instance. I'm going to promote within the same instance. Again, all of my development work should happen in the same place. And then if I want people to participate in QA, I push the QA assets into another instance using publish. All right, so that's done. I have an initial commit and I can promote. So again, I'm going to add my rename rule. Instead of having anything end with dev, it's now going to end with QA. It occurs at the end of the string. Here we go. All right, so how many repositories do I have? I have prod, I have QA, and link. I don't need any more. I can get rid of link. So let me get rid of that link repository. Okay, so now I just have two repositories, prod and QA. Fantastic. If I go back into my data center, I now have three data flows. That QA data flow is now out, going to output the assets that I want to have my um, team QA against. So again, in my visualization, we're at this point here. I've set up, you know, I'm publishing for distribution. I'm not publishing for QA yet. So let me set that up. Go into publications here. I'll create a new publication and we'll call this landing page A. Um, at this point, I would add my subscriber for Domo Community QA instance. We don't have a QA instance, so I'm just going to publish it into my... Ooh, can I publish into test? <laughs> I don't know who owns test, but I'm going to publish it into test. I don't care. Um, so 
So I'll publish it into my test environment. And the data set that I'm pushing is that QA asset. The rest of this stuff we don't really need to discuss because this is not a tutorial about publish. Okay. So now I have, I called it sandbox, sorry, that's confusing. I now have two publications. One's moving the QA pipeline into the QA environment so my users that are part of that process can look at it and say, oh, this is great, this needs to change or whatever. My, v, my production pipeline is still moving through as expected. And again, because I have them pointed at different sandboxes, I have a separation between church and state as I'm iterating on my content in the dev data flow. So let's see that at work. So let's say I get feedback from the QA team, they want me to add a new column. So I got some feedback from them that I'm supposed to implement. I did the thing, I get it working, everyone's happy, I think. I now need to push it out to the QA team for them to review. So now I'm gonna go into the activity log, I'll go to my sandboxes, and I'll say, hey, I need to update the definition of my QA assets. So I'm gonna go ahead and commit the changes, I'm gonna commit the changes to QA. Notice prod, not touching it. So prod is still gonna look like what it did previously. I will now promote the changes in QA. What that means is if I come over to my QA side, I should now see that new column. When I save and run, it's gonna update the QA asset, that QA asset is now going to be in Domo everywhere. It's now going to update what I'm pushing into my distribution center for QA, my QA environment. My users are going to look at it, they're going to love it, they're going to say, yay, rubber stamp, it's good, let's move it into production. So then I can now come into my dev side and actually I don't need to make any changes, they've accepted the changes, so I can just go into my sandbox, go into my production repository. I can commit the changes. Now, because I've done the initial development, it got accepted by the QA team, I'm ready to push it into production, into the distribution center that's public and facing you know, the whole world or the whole organization. I'll now promote that change. If I go into my production data flow, The changes have been implemented, na 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 na. I save and run. Save and run. Now, again, as I come back into Domo Everywhere and look at my publications, now and only now is that production version of the published job updating. And again, that's all we're doing here. We initially said table stakes if we're using publish, or really table stakes at all in Domo is to use a sandbox to separate your dev work from your production work. Separate, I'm noodling on stuff and I'm showing the noodling to my VPs, right? Let's separate that using sandbox. In, in the case of customers that I'm consulting, I strongly recommend that they separate their dev instance from their distribution center, their production environment. But one of the things that I'm doing that's slightly different is I'm keeping all of the ETL in the dev environment so that I only need developers in the dev environment and read only folks, they live in my distribution center. In a similar vein, as I move on to adding QA, I just add another repo for QA 
and produce another set of QA assets. Um, and then again, what that allows me to do is it allows me to separate church and state. I can have noodling happening over here in dev. I can commit the noodling to QA. I can make sure that it passes the QA process. Um, and then once it does, then I commit and promote my um, production pipeline to update the data that's in the distribution center. Cool. Um, guys, I hope you found that useful. If you have any other questions, reach out to me um, in the Domo user group or on the Slack channel. Um, I'm here. Love answering questions. Good luck. Catch you guys later. Bye.